Scoliosis is broken down into many categories, and the most common diagnosis time is something called moderate scoliosis. It's actually the most common diagnosis, an initial diagnosis of scoliosis. So what does that mean? What's, what does that size mean? How do you measure it? And what are the, the typical effects associated with moderate sc scoliosis? So first of all, let's talk about how we measure a scoliosis or the severity of a scoliosis. It's something that's called a Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle is the standard of measurement to measure the size or magnitude of a scoliosis. And the way that's done is you take the most tilted vertebra and compare it to the most tilted vertebra above or below, and you measure that angle, and that gives you a Cobb angle. If that is in a moderate severity, then this, this obviously diagnosed as a moderate scoliosis. And what are these severities? So the mild scoliosis is something between 10 and 25 degrees. Moderate scoliosis is considered between 25 and 40 degrees. Severe scoliosis is something that's 40 degrees or greater. And then I always have a fourth category, which is something called very severe scoliosis, which is something that's 80 plus. Now, when we're dealing with patients with moderate scoliosis, there's some things to consider when it comes to regarding treatment. First of all is age. Age is probably the most important factor in dealing with a scoliosis case because we know a patients that when they go through puberty and they get if I move from juvenile stages to adolescent stages and they're going through growth, that stage of growth is the most common stage of when curves start to progress. However, if the curve, say, doesn't progress at any kind of severe rate during um, this adolescent stage, we also know curves can progress during adult stage Stage, and it can also progress late stage life. So in older patients and in younger patients, we're concerned about rapid progression. In the middle stage of life between 20 and 40, we're not seeing a lot of rapid progression, but this is when patients start to feel the cause or the effect, I'm sorry, the effect of having a scoliosis. And that effect could be pain and it could be other things. So we're very associated, uh, the age of the patient can dictate how we want to take care of them. The location of curve is also very important, whether it's a um, upper thoracic, thoracic curve, thoracolumbar, or lumbar curve, moving from top to bottom in the spine. The location of the curve can also dictate what it affects as well. Now, what are the symptoms mostly associated with the moderate scoliosis? The first and foremost is people tend to notice postural change. They'll notice uneven shoulders or uneven hips or a waist change or ribs that look a little different or even changes to the way they walk or stand, clothes fitting a little different. Um, that's the most common things they tend to notice is like some kind of postural physical differences. We also tend to see some type of uh, headaches, or they may have some neck pain or some headaches, or maybe some dull, achy pain at the site of the scoliosis in a child. However, pain in, in an adult case is much more common, meaning they're gonna feel pain as a result of the scoliosis progressing in the adult stage. Other symptoms outside of those main ones are a little less often, but they still happen. Um, digestive issues can be a problem associated with scoliosis. As the curve increases, it decreases increases the space for the digestive system to function. It can affect the nerves controlling the digestive system. It can also lead to some menst menstruation issues in, in women or girls, and it can also affect sleep. It can affect their sleep, not being able to sleep properly. Now, one thing we know, scoliosis is a progressive problem. So every patient with moderate scoliosis is at risk for coming, becoming a patient with severe scoliosis, especially in the most critical stage with growth and development. Growth and development is when the most rapid progression tends to occur. And for girls, this happens between 11 and 13. For boys, it's more like 12 to 15. In these growth stages is when the curve can progress very, very rapidly. So if you know you already have moderate scoliosis and you're in that age category, you don't wanna be going six months to a year to reevaluate whether your scoliosis has progressed or not. You wanna be taking this very, very, looking at this very closely and I like to reevaluate based upon growth, meaning I will be measuring the child or at home or with in a doctor visit, measuring the child every couple weeks or so. And if you see growth, you want to do an evaluation before that. Because what happens in a lot of patients is they'll go into a doctor's clinic and they'll say, okay, you got a moderate scoliosis, it's 30 degrees. Come back in you know, six months or maybe even a year and we'll evaluate you then. 
Well, you can walk out of that doctor's office today with a child, say your son or your daughter, they can go through a growth spurt tomorrow, right? And they can literally go three inches in that six month period of time, and you're not gonna get reevaluated again for another six months to a year. You're gonna lose a lot of valuable time. You're gonna see a lot of tremendous amount of progression in that time where you could have caught it sooner if you were reacting to growth, because we know that's what causes it to progress. So pants becoming too short, shoes becoming too small, uh, signs of growth are the things you're looking for that can tell us or associate with scoliosis uh, progression. Um, also, in late stage life for females, another time that's important is postmenopause. It has something to do with hormonal changes in women. We tend to see this progressive state postmenopause. So, postmenopause, if you already know you have a moderate scoliosis, you've had it your whole life, and you start hitting this menopause time, um, get your scoliosis evaluated because it can it can progress, especially if you're having some of the other symptoms pain, digestive disorder, and some of the other things that you may be associated with your scoliosis. And the last thing is something called degenerative scoliosis progression. Degenerative scoliosis progression is unfortunately a consequence of having scoliosis your whole life. As your scoliosis um, is in your spine, gravity is compressing over time, causing your spine to degenerate asymmetrically. It's, it has nothing to do with what caused your curve, it's just gravity. And gravity is causing this degenerative state of your scoliosis to continue to affect the bones and the discs and the nerves. This degeneration causes the spine to remodel to the shape of your scoliosis, which perpetuates itself. And so therefore this degenerative progression in the late stage life could also lead, cause a curse to go, to go from moderate into the severe stage. So what are some treatment options when it comes to patients with moderate scoliosis and you know what are they like well when it comes to traditional treatment there's really only a few options and it doesn't matter what stage of life you're in when if you're a child with a moderate scoliosis there's really one of two options for you option one is nothing they just watch it and because there is the half the doctors or a good majority of them of the doctors in traditional approach will say there's nothing you can do to alter scoliosis during growth so if it's going to progress it's going to progress and then maybe the other half of doctors or so will recommend a, a brace and it'll be one of two types of braces most likely it'll be a boston brace or a nighttime sleeping brace and the goal of these two braces are really just trying to hold the curve from worsening they're not trying to take a moderate scoliosis and make it mild they're not really trying to reduce the curve they're just trying to hold it where it is. Um, however, what we find is that these two types of approaches really don't have a great success. In the adult stage with a moderate scoliosis, you really have nothing to deal with the size of the curve. Um, they're not going to offer you anything. If you're having pain, if you're having any types of symptoms as a result, they're going to treat the symptoms as the symptoms. They're not going to really be dealing with your scoliosis, with it progressing. Um, they're going to not going to be dealing with the size of it or even trying to reduce it. They're really just going to be dealing with the symptoms that you're experiencing. So if you're having digestive disorders, they'll deal with your digestive problems as the symptom, but not necessarily looking at the cause of it. If you're having back pain, they'll give you pain medications or injections, but nothing to deal with the scoliosis size. But there's also another approach, and I call it the functional approach. And the functional approach is very different. It's trying to restore function back to the spine. So number one, the spine stops progressing. But more importantly, is to try to restore function back to the spine by actually reducing the size of the curve, which is what has the largest factor in how much a curve progresses. What I mean is the likelihood of curve progressing in a child or an adult is directly related to how big the curve is. So to stop a curve from progressing, the best thing to do is not to watch or to wait, it's to reduce it, and because if you can reduce it, you're gonna alter the, how fast it progresses no matter what stage of life you're in. So what is my advice if you know you have moderate scoliosis? Number one, is do not wait. There's no benefit in letting a moderate scoliosis become severe. There's no benefit in letting a scur uh, scoliosis become larger. All you're doing is uh, delaying the, the, the treatment process and making it more difficult for you to reduce your moderate scoliosis which becomes more severe. So my number one advice is to be evaluated and to start working on a process that's gonna deal with the causes of your problems as opposed to just treating the symptoms of it. So I would recommend that you get it evaluated 
and start working on a process that's gonna reduce the curve and leave, us, leave you with a, a process that's gonna stop the curve from progressing over time. So that's my first recommendation. And lastly, if you have a child that has moderate scoliosis, there's no reason to wait for them either. Like the younger children always have better results. So my recommendation for them too is to be evaluated and to reduce the curve as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.